Good morning, all of you. Today we have joined here for the seminar COVID-19 and Beyond Environmental and Health Issues. So this this particular seminar is organized by the SS Memorial College, Kathi Road, Rachi. Myself, Dr. Paramita Gupta, welcome you all in today's webinar, the platform of new technology where we can share our knowledge and ideas. So before we begin today's webinar session, I would like to take this opportunity and privilege and honor to welcome our chief patron, Professor Dr. Honorable Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Ramesh Kumar Pandey, our patron, the PVC Madam, Dr. Kamini Kumar, Chairperson, Dr. Shamshun Nihar, the principal of SS Memorial College, my co-convener, Dr. Shumbul Siddiqui, the organizing team, our teachers, students, the technical staffs, and all the guests, those who have joined us in today's webinar. I now welcome today's chairperson, Dr. Shamshun Nihar. She is the principal of Constituent College, SS Memorial, under Rachi University. Today's webinar, we can say, is the brainchild of Dr. Nihar. Professor Nihar is very dynamic, super talented, and dedicated personality. She imparted her services for more than 25 years in zoology, in teaching and training. She has been awarded by various academic excellences awards along with the senior scientist award given by the ZSI. She had also produced many PhDs and helped out research scholars in doing their work. She has full immense potential and talented, dynamic and focused personality who has brought the college into a long way and is still doing the best that she, that a person can do on a service. So I now request Dr. Shamshu Nihar to kindly take over the webinar session and welcome all the guests and put forward her views and tell us regarding the topic today. Ma'am, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Pranita. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Ranchi University, Professor Ramesh Kumar Pandey, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Kamini Kumar, my esteemed guest speakers and participants. A very good morning to all of you. At the outset, let me say that it is the best of time and worst of time. Worst of time is obvious, that is due to horrendous coronavirus. But best of time, is that as the professors and intellectuals are confined in their homes, so it is the best time to bring them together on the virtual platform. Had it not been the lockdown period, we would not have been able to organize this webinar in a such a short period of time. It was only 10 days back, the idea of organizing the webinar clicked into my mind while having an online meeting with my faculty members and all of them came the topic COVID-19 and beyond environmental and health issues. I would like to take a few seconds to introduce this topic. With the declaration of COVID-19 as pandemic by WHO on 11th March 2020, a complete lockdown was imposed throughout the country and the life of the countrymen came to a grinding halt. Though the pandemic and several other catastrophic events have happened in the past, in 1918 itself only people have witnessed Spanish flu. But Corona pandemic, pandemic is first of its kind because of its high reproductive number. Today, it has spread its tentacles to more than 200 countries, taking a toll of 4,46,000 lives throughout the globe. In India alone, the cases have risen to 3,82,532 and more than 12,000 lives have been lost. It, ha it has affected the whole humanity irrespective of economic, geographical and racial boundaries. It has brought damage 
to public health, economy, social system, communication, relationships, etc. Health and environment are two very important concerns of each and every individual. So today's webinar focuses on these two aspects. As contact is the only source of infection of coronavirus, the so social distancing is one of the important ways and means to prevent COVID-19. But this has totally jeopardized the social relationship and social fabric of our society. We are living a life never imagined before. As a result, lots of anxiety, lots of speculations are there. So this webinar has been designed in such a way that the experts may give insight to the problem and may come up with some solutions which may be beneficial to the humanity as a whole. Though more than 1 million people around the globe have recovered from coronavirus, but it is just like winning first of many battles. Because earlier experiences with SARS survivors, that is severe acute respiratory syndrome, it has come to light that the aftermath of this epidemic lasted for more than a decade. Some of the recovered coronavirus patients report breathlessness, fatigue and body pain months after infection. Small scale studies conducted in Hong Kong and Wuhan showed that the survivor tackled with poor functioning of the lung, heart and liver. Along with attacking the respiratory system, the coronavirus is not known to attack many parts of the body. It is damaging from eyeballs to toes, from guts to kidney and in combating this, these infections, the immune system of the body is jeopardized. Thus, compounding the damage. What shape this present corona crisis will take and what scars it will leave is yet to be known. The researchers are studying the effect of SARS which is caused by the virus of similar family and one of the studies has shown that the survivors of the SARS suffered from lung infection, high cholesterol level, frequent sickness as long as 12 years. Regarding COVID-19, it is too early to predict its long-term consequences. Studies related to the effect of COVID-19 on human body and after the recovery will provide a good information to various stakeholders like government in budgeting in the health sectors, to the doctors who are looking after the patients for long term and to the companies who have to set their sick leave policies etc. In the midst of devastating COVID-19 pandemic, environment had a heyday. I'll tell you how COVID-19 has positively affected the environment. NO2 is one of the major pollutants in the air and high level of NO2 has significant effect on human health like worsening of cough, aggravation of respiratory disease, asthma, etc. And the experts are finding noteworthy connection between high levels of air pollution and increased COVID-19 death rate. We know that human activity is primarily liable for discharge of NO2 in urban region with road transport being the main source. Air airplanes, power plants, etc. all of which consume fossil fuels 
add to the concentration of NO2 in the environment. Surprisingly, during the stringent worldwide lockdown, NO2 levels dropped heavily in the urban region and also in the Indian metropolitan cities. The worldwide abatement in NO2 level were first observed in China followed by countries like Europe, North America, North America etc. In India also, the contamination level tumbled to a dramatic low following the lockdown in the month of March. Numerous scientists of the opinion that drop in air pollution levels may as of now be saving a lot of lives just by lessening people's susceptibility to COVID-19. But the question arises, how long this credibility will stay? After the lockdown is lifted, the levels of pollutants will rise to the normal unhealthy level. So to make the current drops in air pollution lasting, genuine approach or change needs to be adopted. So use of electric power vehicle instead of fossil fuel power, shift to renewable energy, expanding of public transportation, fabricating more cycle paths and encouraging individuals to jettison their own vehicles are some of the measures which if adopted will definitely reduce the pollution load in the country. Over and above, since the inception of lockdown due to pandemic and not availability of a specific drug or vaccine in the market, there have been widespread speculations about COVID-19. The people are in a state of despair and uncertainty clings to their hearts. So today we have doctor, expert, intellectuals with us who will share their knowledge and views and enlighten us with successful health and environment intervention to help us get back to our normal lives. Now I take the opportunity to welcome my esteemed guest speakers, Professor S.K. Bhatnagar, ex-dean, College of Biotechnology, SVP University of Agriculture and Technology Merit, and presently editor-in-chief of Vegetos, an international journal of plant research. You are most welcome, sir. Professor Vishwanath Mukherjee, Professor of Environmental, Logis, Environmental Science and ex HOD of Zoology, Ranchi Sri Ranchi, Dr. Venka Takpara, an erudite professor of Zoology, most welcome, sir, and Dr. Manasi Hasnan, ex medical director, chief of surgery, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, heartily welcome, sir. I am grateful to all of you for accepting my invitation and sparing your valuable and precious time for making this webinar a grand success. My special thanks to my VC, Professor Ramesh Kumar Pandey. Now, I would like Dr. Parimita, the anchor for today, who has shown keen interest in organizing this webinar to take over. Dr. Parimita, please take over. We will move on with the seminar today and I welcome the first guest, Dr. S.K. Bhatnagar. Professor S.K. Bhatnagar has started his career in higher education way back in 1977. Professor Bhatnagar had been working as a professor in Cell Biology College of Biotechnology, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, University of Agriculture and Technology, Meerut, and remained head for four departments for more than 10 years. He has a vast experience of 40 years in teaching and research. He has uh, also served as Dean, Pro-Vice Chancellor of the same university as a Nodal Officer and as Chairman of Screening Committee 
of the same Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel University. He is also the officiating registrar. These are few laureals to name a few. I request Professor S.K. Bhatnagar to kindly take up the session and I formally welcome our first speaker, Professor S.K. Bhatnagar. Uh, very good morning to everyone. And uh, uh, it is a great opportunity for me to share some of my views in the webinar seminar which has been organized by SS Memorial College, a prestigious college of Ranchi. I thank the organizers, especially uh, Dr. Shamsul Neher and uh, her colleagues for giving me an opportunity to interact through this web seminar. And now, as you all know that uh, we all are being encountered with a very invisible type of virus and uh, it is posing a health hazard to the entire world, not only India, but the entire world is being suffered because of this virus. Uh, now, as far as our world is concerned, we have a great biodiversity which includes plants, animals, microorganisms, and so many other things. There is a perfect balance between the living and non-living components or biotic and abiotic components and there is a perfect ecosystem in the world and this ecosystem work in coordination with each other. Now the important thing is that the nature produces this ecosystem whether it is an ocean ecosystem, it is a forest ecosystem, it is a freshwater ecosystem, whatever type of ecosystem it is. It is in the perfect stage and the living and non-living or biotic and abiotic components, they are in perfect coordination with each other. Then what went wrong with the entire world? Because we started interfering into the ecosystem. We started over-utilizing the biotic components as well as abiotic components. And this disturbance between the perfect balance which has been provided by nature, we are posing to different types of threat. COVID-19 is one such threat. And not only COVID-19, but in the earlier days, we had different types of viruses, different types of bacteria, different types of health hazard, which were either man-made or they were created by human beings because of their interference into the nature. <clears throat> now I give you one example. In Indian mythology, particularly in Hindu mythology, we have seen or we have learned about Maharshi Balmiki. Now, he was a person who was great saint and later on he wrote Ramayana, which is a pious religious document as far as Hindu mythology is concerned. Now, in the earlier time, Maharshi Valmiki was called as Ratnakar. He was born in normal family and for livelihood, mm -hmm. He was looting the persons, he was a decoit, he was a murderer and he used to earn his livelihood because of these type of cruel acts. Now what happened? One day Narada came to him and he started fighting with him and tried to loot him. So what Narada said? that Ratnakar, you had been doing all these things, you had been looting the persons, you are murdering the persons, you are making them injured, what for you are doing all these things? What he said? He said that I will have to earn livelihood to feed my entire family, my wife, my children and everyone. Then Narada said, 
that for whom you had been doing all these cruel acts, you are doing a sin. Are you sure that your wife, your children, or the persons who are depending on your cruel act, they will be sharing your cruelty? They will be sharing the sin which you are committing by murdering others, by looting others? Just go to your home back and ask them that what you are doing. And are they prepared to share it with you? So Valmiki Daden Ratnakar, he went to his family and asked them that I had been doing all these things 24 hours to make you happy, to earn so many things for you. And I am earning a lot of sin. Will you share the sin with me? Everybody, including his wife or the closest one, they said, why should we share? This is your act. You are earning sin. We are not earning sin. So why should we share the sin with you? And that was a moment that Ratnakar, he was completely transformed and he was totally devoted to the Almighty and he started worshipping and then came in contact with Ramayana. It is a long story, but what I want to emphasize is that a person can transform if the things are moving right. This is a story that uh, the uh, Ratnakar, he was transformed into uh, Maharshi Valmiki and wrote Ramayana. Likewise, we as human beings are running cats and dogs for earning money, destroying nature, destroying natural resources, damaging climate, which has been provided free of cost by nature. But for our selfish attitude, for fulfilling our own requirement, which are endless, which are having no end, at all. We are doing all these types of sin. We are committing uh, different types of damages to our nature, to our earth, to our climate, to our environment. Now COVID-19 created corona pandemic. Perhaps this is to make us realize that the human being should stop running for the materialistic world as we can survive with the minimum basic need. I think Everybody has witnessed and experienced that what we need, we are confined to our homes, we are confined to the restricted livelihood materials, and even then we are surviving well. So whatever we are moving around, we are running around, are our additional requirements. But the basic requirements we are meeting while sitting inside home. At the same time, the near and dear for whom the human beings are doing all these types of panic, they are also aloof and they are not going to share. Now, one thing which is very uh, different I want to share, that this type of pandemic has come with a fate that if a person suffers from corona and he dies, the best possible nears and dears to whom he considers to be the most closest one, they will not be able to pay the last rights to a person who died of corona pandemic. So this is a fact. This was uh, a commitment which we made and then later in our area we started working that the people should be kept aware of this pandemic and what uh, precautionary measures they should take and this is just a, a small uh, certificate which was issued uh, on account of creating awareness among them. Now we should very clearly understand that these type of viruses will come one after another. The Spanish flu was there, plague was there, dengue was there, AIDS was there, and there are so many types of viruses. Nearly 249 types of different viruses are present in the atmosphere. So after one or the other, these viruses will come to the human beings. They will either come to the human being either directly or through our environmental system through our food, 
through different types of animals or through water through air or through any other agency and these viruses when they attack on our system what we should do either we should go to the medicines we should take a treatment and when a new virus like covid-19 comes we do not have the vaccine we are not prepared for it so how can we prepare ourselves is more important that we should always keep a good health and for good health we have a very well designed immune system now in the present time what is happening that we are focusing more on the prepared food from outside we are focusing on the non hygienic things which are being prepared in the market or which are being prepared by something somebody different and we have start stop taking our children have stopped taking the food material which is prepared by the uh, in the fresh kitchen in the very hygienic manner by our parents by the mother or by our sister or inside the home so what is happening that the immune system of the new generation and even the older generation uh, which are in the middle age that is becoming weaker and weaker and when we lose our immune system ultimately when we are weak from inside anybody from outside can attack if we are strong from inside nobody from outside can dare to attack so this is what we have to see india is very rich in natural resources particularly in the field of medicinal plants and there is a dedicated ministry which is called as ministry of ayush and this ayush ministry include all the natural resources which we are having either through ayurvedic system of uh, treatment homeopathic system of treatment yunani system of treatment or naturopathy or other things all these things come under the banner of ayush ministry so the in charge of this ayush ministry or the minister uh, shripad nayak he uh, emphasized uh, by the directive of honorable prime minister that we should focus on different types of researches which will include the medicinal plants which we have as natural resources and we should focus that what type of medicinal plants can be helpful in increasing the immune system although it is not new that the our ancient people uh, rishis and munis and different types of vaidya or different types of uh, ayurveda charya they used to uh, implement all these types of medicinal plants for curing different types of diseases and therefore they had a very long healthy life but with the passage of time we started believing in shorter therapies ayurvedic maliye kaam par chaliye means we want to have the medicines which give us a quick relief it is just like we are sitting in a classroom and if some student ask a question so there are two options either we should satisfy the student by giving an appropriate answer second thing we should ask them to sit down and do not disturb the class what is the best course as a teacher the best course is that we should satisfy the inquiry made by the student not by asking him to sit down and not to disturb the class because the anxiety which that particular student was having it has been suppressed by the teacher it has not been permitted to come out it has not been permitted to get the solution rather it has been suppressed so what will happen this will create a frustration and this suppression will come out of his body either in this way or that way either he will create some sort of nuisance in the class or he will create some sort of nuisance outside means because his curiosity is not cleared by the teacher similar is the case with different types of therapies like sometimes we suppress the disease sometimes we suppress the pathogen and that suppressed pathogen find some other way to come out of the body and we find different types of ailment to which we call as the side effect of the medicine the ministry of ayush is focused on finding the root cause of the disease 
root cause of the problem and to uh, eradicate it from the body forever. Now again, Indian Council of Medical Research comes into action and it has been told that Ministry of Ayush will give the different types of projects, it will be submitted to ICMR and they will find out whether these type of researches will be useful for the humankind or not and then the final decision will be taken up. Now you can see that the only reason, the only way to fight COVID-19 and not only COVID-19, different types of viruses which have already entered into our biosphere or the viruses which will come in the future to come. So we have to prepare our next generation because our life has almost reached to the quarter part or almost uh, three-fourths of the life is complete for the senior scientists. But the younger generation, we have to provide them a safe environment. We have to educate them for developing a better immune system so that the viruses can be kept away. As you can see in the slide, I have tried that we should have a very strong hand, very strong immune system so that all types of pathogens, all types of viruses, all types of harmful uh, microorganisms, they should be kept away from our body and they should not be allowed to disturb our system. Now in the recent time, everybody has become a doctor. Many of the people, they are suggesting different types of plants. But these plants have already been authenticated by different types of Ayurvedic uh, Acharya or different types of uh, uh, Vedde uh, who had been using all these types for curing human beings and for developing a better immune system. Now Ashugandha is one, Vithanya Somniferum. It is the botanical name of Ashugandha, Vithanya Somniferum. Then Anutel is another combination of oil which has been prepared to keep our nerves intact. Tulsi, Osimum Sanctum is a pious plant which has been worshipped by the pupil for the time immemorial. And the plants which we worship does not mean that we worship for being Hindu or for being Muslims or for being of any caste and creed. But we worship them so that they can be conserved, so that they can be protected, so that they should not become endangered because they are of paramount importance for the human health and they are good for the entire society, irrespective of any caste, creed, religion or anything. Then Gloe, Tinoespora. It is a very important plant which is being used nowadays and so many people they are habitual of taking either gloe directly or in the form of some sort of formulation. So all these plants they are of paramount importance so as to increase our immune system. Uh, now uh, let us talk a little about what immune system is. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. The the first milk of mother is given to the child so that different types of antibodies are developed into the child and he should be made uh, able to fight against different types of pathogen uh, after uh, an individual takes birth in the world. So the immune system starts developing into the body and it starts from the mother milk uh, in the beginning. But later on, as soon as the child becomes uh, elder, the child becomes old, then the immune system has to be maintained by ourselves. So immunity protect our body against disease. This is a simple definition what we understand as far as immune system is concerned. Now what are the reasons of immunodeficiency? It may be a heredity or a genetical disorder that the person should be weak. Some people they get cold, they become Warm, they get uh, repeatedly fevers, they get repeatedly, uh, they get ill. Uh, so that is a genetic character because their parents are also weak and therefore that is a heredity or inherited character from parents to offspring. Second is the environmental factor. Uh, in which environment we had been living, whether we are living in a healthy hygienic environment, then our immune system will be strong. If we are living in a positive environment, the people around us are thinking positive and we are having a good healthy environment, cheerful environment, 
then we have a good immune system and we are able to fight against diseases we are not perplexed we are not under any nervous breakdown we do not feel depressed and the entire environment as far as the nature is concerned as far as our surroundings are concerned our friend circle is concerned that is the environmental factor which cause immunodeficiency because sometimes if a person is weak and the surroundings they start telling different types of story of negative attitude that that person got ill and he died within 15 days that person he was having the similar type of symptom and he could not recover after 30 days of treatment and he died so these are all negative environments which are created into a person who is already suffering from different types of diseases so this is the reason of immunodeficiency now the primary cause of immunodeficiency when a baby has symptoms since birth which become more evident in young or older or elder state secondary immunodeficiency is that which developed due to medicines because in india everybody is a doctor and we take antibiotics like churan and chutney means sometimes like food we start taking antibiotics so sometimes when we take medicines in bulk or without consulting a proper doctor or a physician then they are reducing our immunity and it is the reason for immunodeficiency other ailments like a metabolic disorder which is called a diabetes or hiv chemotherapy after cancer and severe burns if a person is suffering from all these type of ailments then ultimately he is posed to different types of medicines which reduce the immune system some people who are suffering from cancer they are advised that they should be given chemotherapy or radiotherapy and all as everybody knows that chemotherapy is the ultimate protocol in allopathic medicine so when chemotherapy is given the immune system goes to the lowest level means a person who has recovered from uh, cancer after chemotherapy or radiotherapy they have a very weak immune system and therefore during covid 19 it was advised that the person who are suffering from diabetes or metabolic disorder or they have are suffering from cancer or other types of heart ailments they should not be exposed much to the environment therefore because they are having already a deficient immune system and they uh, may be uh, rather they may be attacked by this virus easily in human it may be a genetic disease like hiv aids related illness or because of immunosuppressive drugs <clears throat> now how can we boost immune system uh, uh, needless to say that uh, this is just uh, a slide which i have tried to educate the young generation that the almonds they are the source of vitamin e which along with vitamin c they keep the immune system healthy if we take a handful of almonds in the morning every day then our immune system will become very strong and we should be able uh, to fight against different types of ailments then mushrooms as you know different types of oyster mushroom ganoderma or you know, different types of other mushrooms are also there it is a type of fungi belonging to uh, basidiomycetes no, sorry ascomycetes and these mushrooms they are very rich in selenium and b vitamin so these type of vitamins or riboflavins and niacins they are also very helpful in increasing the immune system and the person can be stronger if they are habitual of taking mushrooms almost uh, a week uh, on weekly basis or twice in a fortnight now another is uh, garlic as you know the people they have been uh, uh, very uh, usually saying that if you take one a small uh, bud of garlic every day in the morning then you can have a better immune system because garlic has got sulfoxide alene and if it is crushed means garlic is crushed then alene is turned into allicin which is unstable and converts into sulfur containing compound which make it medicinally very important so this is the medicinal value of garlic because many of the people they reject garlic because of its odor because of its foul odor but it has got so many types of uh, uh, medicinal properties because of which our immune system can be made strong citrus fruit 
as on the media and social media you had been listening every day that all the fruits which are um, uh, sour in taste they contain vitamin c or the vitamin c as a supplement we can take it so all the citrus fruits they contain vitamin c and they are very helpful in increasing our immune system now how vitamin c works vitamin c functions against pathogen and enhance differentiation of b and t cells vitamin c increase the production of white blood cells as you know that white blood corpuscles they are good and they are uh, the fighters they are the soldiers inside our body and they can fight against different types of pathogen they are amoeba type cells and they are capable of engulfing the pathogen from the body so the production of white blood cells is very important so vitamin c increase the production of wbc and lymphocytes and phagocytes we call them as phagocyte because phago means to engulf so they engulf the pathogen and we are saved we are protected against the pathogen so vitamin c work against different types of pathogen and provide good immune system to our body uh, it act as an antioxidant uh, to the younger generation i would like to uh, emphasize on the word antioxidant antioxidant means sometimes the oxygen which is molecular it is good for our health and we depend totally on molecular oxygen but sometimes these molecular oxygen uh, or the oxygen molecules they are broken up and when they are broken up they are converted into ions when they are converted into ions they are having two negative ions so means two negative means they are capable they are having two electrons extra when they are having two electrons extra just like a money money just like a person who is holding extra money he will try to give it to somebody else to destabilize him also a stable person if he get extra money then he will be destabilized and he will try to spend it some way or the other so these free oxygen radicals they enter into our body and they just provide electron to the stable molecules which we are having in our body then what happens then the stable molecules or the stabilized metabolic system get disturbed so what we need we need the chemicals we need certain substances which can neutralize these oxygen free oxygen radicals so that our metabolism can be uh, restored or it can be as usual so vitamin c act as a very important antioxidant and help in fighting against a pomegranate as you all know it is also very important it also uh, help in increasing the immune system uh, this is these are the examples which i have given that they inhibit the growth of different types of harmful bacteria escherichia coli salmonella shigella listeria clostridium and so many other things now uh, what we see that turmeric uh, which uh, is very important as far as indian conditions are concerned we use it in the uh, kitchen and the turmeric uh, it is uh, uh, very frequently found in india but we started understanding its medicinal value when the united states of america started uh, rather patenting the turmeric uh, powder or turmeric and he started saying that turmeric we have patented or we are patenting and if anybody want to use turmeric then he will have to pay to united states of america then what happened council of scientific and industrial research they became alert and whatever uh, plant wealth whatever biological wealth medicinal wealth india was having they started enlisting all those medicinal plants and they declared the entire list uh, in which different types of medicinal plants were listed and that was patented so that no other country can patent the wealth of india or the plant which are already available in india turmeric is also a very good antioxidant and uh, there are so many types of researches which uh, have been published because of the curcumin it has in uh, turmeric lemon as you know vitamin c it contains green tea it also contain antioxidant and thyroid mediated supplement indian ginseng it contain 32 type of triterpenoids and 7 polyesterines 17 fatty acids 8 amino acids and so and so 
now we uh, focus on microbes for health uh, now the most important thing is one very important plant which we usually consider as a neglected plant and these are microalgae these microalgae which once upon a time were neglected discipline now they have been taken up by the scientists as a very important feed stock for preparing different types of pharmaceuticals for cosmetics for food stuff for different types of uh, health uh, supplements and different other things so just a very brief idea i have been presenting microalgae as natural source of carotenoid these are coloring agent for pharmaceutical and they are antioxidant carotene as you find in carrot also it is produced commercially from dunaliella selina and is a potent antioxidant now you can see astaxanthin it is a red keto carotenoid and it is obtained from unicellular green alga hematococcus the extraction is being done in israel and it is being commercialized by that country lutein is obtained from sandesmus it is another algae in adequate quantity it may prevent the effect of human disease like age related muscular degeneration because as the age advances there with different types of muscles which we are having they become weak and the pupil they start either trembling or they have difficulty in walking from one place to another so the muscles they become weak and it can fight lutein can fight against the muscular dystrophy the microalgae is also a natural source of pufa polyunsaturated fatty acids now these polyunsaturated fatty acids are nutritionally and pharmaceutically valuable microalgae can accumulate oil in the form of tri acyl glycerol or tag which is stores polyunsaturated fatty acids pufa like tacosa hexanoic acid is a component of healthy food and algae are the prime producer of pufa in marine system now algae also is a dietary food supplement seaweeds or macroalgae they prevent dreadful diseases like cancer heart disease aging and alzheimer they have anti mutagenic hypo uh, cholesterolemic and immuno stimulant anti hiv and anti aging components there are certain bioactive algae like gelidium corticata it suppresses reactive oxygen so you can see that most of the algal species they are helping in neutralizing the reactive oxygen which we are having because reactive oxygen reduces our immune system the reactive oxygen uh, disturbs our entire metabolism and the disease is because of the reduction in metabolic system or metabolic disorder because in ayurveda the people say that all the diseases they start from our stomach if the metabolism if we are not digesting the food properly well then different types of diseases crop up so our digestive system or our metabolism should be strong so all these things which we had been talking about they are good as a bioactive agent and they help in uh, neutralizing the reactive oxygen in market you can find different types of product on which it is written that they are antioxidants because in india the market is based on certain nomenclature if we start selling herbal drugs if we start selling organic if we start selling antioxidant then the commercial manufacturers they pick up those words and they utilize it for a different way on everything they will write organic organic dye organic uh, cosmetic organic lipstick organic powder organic this and that organic food organic potato organic so now likewise antioxidant has also become a very important nomenclature but the fact is that there are certain plants there are certain natural products which are helping in neutralizing the reactive oxygen and helping in increasing our immune system nostoc spheroides is another antioxidant and can scavenge superoxide radicals superoxide we are talking about antioxidant and superoxide antioxidant are those i told you when oxygen splits into two ions so one ion usually it get attached to water molecules which our body is holding so when water molecule combine with oxygen reactive oxygen then it is converted into hydrogen peroxide so hydrogen peroxide is also a type of uh, uh, resource for producing reactive oxygen 
so hydrogen peroxide and oxygen when it combined with oxygen reactive oxygen combined with oxygen it forms o3 and means ozone so ozone is also containing or it is also a source of reactive oxygen hydrogen peroxide is also a source of reactive oxygen so what we do we understand that the nature has produced an ozone covering around us this ozone covering is to protect the ultraviolet radiations so why the ozone is not available on the soil we use ozone in uh, biotechnological experiments just to uh, kill the bacteria when we go for tissue culture experiments we want to neutralize a particular area then what we do we ozonate it we provide ozone into it so that the reactive oxygen comes out and it kills the entire bacteria which are present in the system or which are present in the culture medium so i think the young scientists they might be able to understand that what is the role of reactive oxygen how does it harm our metabolism and if we want to kill bacteria then how the reactive oxygen outside our body can kill it and hydrogen peroxide and ozone they are the important sources of reactive oxygen now these are some pictorials you can see geranium spirulina nostoc and porphyridium this is just uh, these are just slides which i try to show you that these are the plants of paramount commercial importance now the marine algae like sargassum and ishige species are uv protected some commercial organization which had been producing the uh, uh, the skin uh, i mean the the face uh, creams or different types of uh, facials or different types of cream which can protect our body against ultraviolet light they if they are organic in real sense then they use marine algae like sargassum and ishige so that they can utilize them they can mix it up with uh, the base and can produce uh, different types of cream which can protect our body against ultraviolet radiation you know that the usa is the first sufferer of ultraviolet radiation because most of the uh, space ships most of the uh, aircrafts they are projected out and the pupil in usa you will never find the pupil in usa sitting in the direct sunlight very recently my daughter is there so i happen to be in us and most of the scientists who had been to us they might have observed that the pupil they avoid sitting in direct sunlight because they develop blisters on the soil and the on the skin and they develop skin cancer so most of the pupil in united states they are not exposed to direct sunlight because they have the fear of developing skin cancers because of extreme ultraviolet radiations coming out through the sunlight so alva is also there gracilaria and different other species of marine algae you can see this sargassum ishige alva and gracilaria then you can find dictyota polysiphonia cytosera and eclonia there are different types of extract which are called as green food in the form of eclonia keva or extract now spirulina as you can see it is a very important uh, single cell protein uh, which is a cyanobacteria which is a blue green algae and these blue green algal plants they have uh, a great uh, great uh, rejuvenation capacity they increase our uh, immune system to a larger extent if we take spirulina capsule a day uh, because uh, uh, in rajasthan i have observed that one of my very close friend they had been uh, working on a department of biotechnology project for tribal women and the tribal people are uh, much more in number in jharkhand also or in different parts of bihar or in other parts of the country so uh, they earn their livelihood because of uh, the spirulina cultivation in their home they take a small uh, tub and put water into it they put certain type of nutrient provided by the scientists put spirulina into it just allow it to multiply they just take it out harvest it and dry it on a small uh, newspaper and when it is dried they just collect it convert it into powder and just uh, provide it to the commercial organization they fill into the capsules and sell it in the market so it is a very good livelihood for the tribal people 
which are habitual of cultivating spirulina. So this is one very important uh, uh, single cell protein which can increase our immune system. Now, uh, specific uh, species of seaweed, they can also be used for the treatment of skin disease. It was a recent study conducted by a student of botany in department of um, Karachi, uh, Karachi University in Pakistan. So, different types of researches are being carried out um, by different students on different aspects. Now, this is the ultimate. If we go uh, forward to 2070 AD, Anno Domini, and some aliens, they come to the earth and visit the earth, then what they will observe if we are not vigilant enough? Then there is no human race on the earth. There is no human community. And what has been done to the human community? Because the human community, they prepare the environment, which is fatal for itself. Like in plant succession, you find that one after another, different types of cereal communities develop. And these cereal communities, they are harmful for them themselves. And therefore, one community is taken over by another community. Likewise, the human beings, they are creating such an environment which is becoming fatal to them and there shall be no human being because of the toxic waste, because of the loss of biodiversity and because of the different types of viruses. So, the aliens, what they will feel? That it seems that the human being failed on the way to sustainable development and that will be the fate of the earth if we are not vigilant enough. So, I thank you all very much for the patient hearing and I thank the organizer for providing me an opportunity to express my views on COVID-19 and our immune system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Bhatnagar. It was an overwhelming response, actually an overwhelming feeling to learn your words, to know from you. We had talked about Ratnakar changing into Valmiki. You spoke about a very strong immune system. You spoke about the Ministry of Ayurveda, Ayush, and the ICMR and the role of ICR to patent our plants that have been in exercise patenting by the USA. We have learned about antioxidants and also, also the use of microalgae and other organic India. We have spoken about two minutes rub of iodex, which was also a very, very true thing that the youth think of. But actually, COVID-19 has taught us how to actually think more and more on immuning, the immune system boosting, and also to take up Ayurveda and other natural sources. So thank you very much for your words. And I also appreciate uh, the way you had also illustrated the things, which was very, very, very commendable. And I do believe that all the participants, my fellow students, those who are joining, and other people had actually gained from your viewpoint. So thank you very much.